Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk uh, these last heroes. It looks like they're going to need uh, like an offlane or a dangler here on Simply Two Base. I know uh, we're both big dangler fans. Yeah, you know, I was like I said, I was leaning towards the Underlord for the offlane, but based mm-hmm. on what I'm seeing now, I think it's going to be a support Rubik, or I'm sorry, a support Batrider, three position Rubik, uh, safe lane <laughs> Ursa, and we're going to be that seeing the mid lane pickup here for I Annihilate. That is a spicy uh, draft. Uh, we'll see if that's what they end up grabbing. I mean, you know these players quite well. You're a, a big Monkeys Forever fan. Five, you explained to me that you've used uh, the Monkeys Forever emote how many times the last year? Uh, by a lot. It was like by a landslide, my most used emote on Twitch. How many, how many times? It was somewhere in the 12,000s. I don't know. It is somewhere in the 12,000s of emote spams. I don't know. I see. Plus or minus a few thousand somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. it was a lot. It's a good, it's a great emote. That's an A tier emote for sure. All right. S tier. Sorry, of- I forget there. I, I, you know, I, I forget uh, there is a rank above A. My apologies, monkeys. Don't. Don't ban me. <laughs> Don't ban me. <laughs> okay, they get rid of the less rack here. Uh, AoE damage, tower push, something that they're lacking a little bit here on yeah. uh, two base. Right now, it's Ursa would have to sit in front of the tower, you know, against uh, spam from the Chikiro, against you know potential like uh, getting jumped on by the Shadow Shaman, held in place with the Shackles. Not really what you want to deal with here. Uh, do you think Death Prophet is in the cards for the last hero that they want to get rid of on uh, Felt? Another hero that's able to shove down towers with the ultimate. Yeah, that's probably a pretty safe bet. It's just one of those things where once you have like the tower push on simply two based here, there's not really a good way to stop them until like Night Stalker has, you know, like Blink and some other stuff because that's going to be like their only really solid form of kind of initiating the team fight. Um, and yeah, I think Death Prop would be a good one. There's they already been the Invoker. Uh, so they're kind of setting up Storm Spirits Band. Yeah, they're getting rid of all the spirit eras here. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. We talked about how good they are at rounding out drafts. Uh, that one interview that uh, we had with Quinn, I think that was uh, alongside Moxie, was talking about how the spirit here is you feel invincible. They got rid of the, the Death Prophet themselves on Simply 2 Base, and that one's a little bit interesting to me. I thought it would have been a nice pickup for, for Simply 2 Base themselves. It would have been still really good for Felt, though. If you look at the draft, you know, like they don't have like a great way of, of just taking down the Death Prophet, and on top of it, it adds even more push to their lineup, which can give space to that Phantom Lancer. Like, Night Stalker will come on pretty early. Shadow Shaman, Jakiro, both great tower hitting supports. Um, and then if you add a Death Prophet into the mix, it's pretty scary. Yep. But given the fact that they have the next pick here on Simply 2 base, it means they, they don't want the Death Prophet. They have something else in mind here. They know exactly what it is they're going to pick. It, the, might, be, course- uh, it might be Monkey King or, or Kunkka. Hmm. It'd be kind of difficult right, I, to run I like those, Kunkka. but... Mm-hmm. Is uh, I Annihilate to the God Kunkka player? I don't know if he's a Kunkka player, but I know he's a Monkey player. I know he likes Monkey King. He's been banned out. There's the Kunkka the band. Stuff. Yeah, it's just like, I think both those heroes offer a lot for their team. Like, extra lockdown, mm-hmm. great team fight potential. Um, Night Stalker has a strug- like, struggles to play around the Kunkka a lot. Yeah, I mean, Kunk is also a little bit of a dangler. We talked about uh, yeah, you gotta the potential have for that one. Enough. You gotta have the dangler. There's still a uh, Dragonite as a mid lane dangler. Dragonite's actually fantastic here. Um, it is a little bit farm dependent. Like he's a feast or famine hero. Like if you struggle on it, then. Ooh, interesting. That's got to be an off lane uh, Sand King, right? Uh, we were, yeah, we're seeing a mid uh, mid bat rider from I Annihilate most likely, and then Monkey King. Or uh, Monkey's Forever will probably be playing the Sand King. This is boring. I wanted the offlane Rubik, man. Boo. Even practicing it. <laughs> you know what? Simply two base. You get a you get a big old boo from Neff and I on this one. Yeah. We we wanted that offlane Rubik, man. Give us something I, spicy. I, I was excited for it. You know, you hyped it up. I'm a big Rubik fan. He's my second favorite hero behind the Earth Spirit. Uh, you can do some incredible things on him. You're playing against a Shadow Shaman as well. Every spell you steal from him is amazing. It really doesn't matter what you take. Let's, uh, what do we got last? We got a Queen of Pain finally to round this trap off. I'm not sure anybody is going to be an easy target for the co-op, though. No, that's, but it does uh, make the Batrider have zero kill threat in mid lane. So that's the thing is you want to be able to pick a mid laner here that still like offers something, but then also just isn't going to get ran over by Batrider, right? Mm-hmm. And Queen of Pain mm-hmm. shouldn't ever really die to that hero. 
That's a, a bold move for sure at uh, the Queen of Pain. We'll see how this one goes, though. Uh, it, you can't get away from the Nick Assassin. You're going to have to eventually build a... Uh, what is that? A very annoying item that I hate the existence of. Uh, God, makes you invincible. In, <laughs> I forget it because I hate it so much. Uh, shadow, what? It makes you oh. invincible? Are you talking about Ghost Sept? Like, Ghost Sept, there would be the, the bad thing. That would Ricky, kill you. Is, uh, I'm going to let you think about me. this one. Rick, Ricky, but... no, I know what it is. The Aeon Disc. Oh, Aeon <laughs> Disc. I'm like, what? Okay, uh, that makes more no, sense. No, you have to get an, an Aeon Disc eventually. I don't think I think I've only ever built an Aeon disc once. I I am not a fan. I think uh against the face of the void it's important that it exists. Against um I guess getting jumped on by the the Sand King getting jumped on by the uh Nyx assassin here it's going to be super important for the co-op towards the end game. Speaking All right, of Nef, we have game 1 here between uh simply two based and felt gonna be a pretty interesting one honestly uh i i want to see felt put up like a really good fight here against these guys um they do have you know a little bit of advantage here on simply two bases they are you know definitely probably one of the favorites of the tournament but uh i think they have a chance you know we got we got a decent draft here out of felt i like it a lot I, I like the draft minus the Queen of Pain. I, I don't like how they rounded this one off. I think uh, a different mid laner would have been a little bit better. It makes it harder for Night Stalker to attack the back line. Uh, Zor is a god, though. We've seen some amazing performances out of him, uh, this tournament. You know, He might just start carrying the game by himself if he ends up popping off in the offlane. Have we seen him done time and time again with his axe? Yeah, man. Can't underestimate Zor at all. As like His playmaking potential is definitely there. <laughs> Uh, things to watch out for this match is uh, Z Freak. You, you know he's been insane this entire tournament, minus the one time where uh, he brought the enemies over to safe link here when he fissured up. Uh, this hell over here, I still remember that one. Yeah, that uh, was very hilarious. Clearly. We'll never forget that one. That one was hilarious. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this has been an amazing tournament for them, and I think if they end up winning today, they get uh, you know the series when the two one of the two zero. Oh, they're secured for uh, moving into the upper division in Ladies season two. I believe that's Welcome correct, yeah. It, if Simply Two Base gets the win here today, I believe they are also secured uh, for that promotion from division two to division one, mm -hmm. which is big for them. You know, that's that's huge. I mean, this team has, they struggled a little bit in the, in the qualifiers, but I think everyone knew, you know, this is a really good stack uh, of players and you know, we were kind of surprised that they uh, didn't make it to Division One in the first place, but Division One's got some great teams as well. Well, things uh, underway. Uh, mid lane's probably not going to be too exciting, unfortunately. Queen of Pain looks like he's just going to get the scream at level one uh, to deal with uh, getting more CS. The bottom lane, the sentry, or sorry, top lane, the sentry trades here with the Sand King. Monkey's Forever ends up getting the advantage here, so it's going to make it difficult for Comfort to get any CS. We'll uh, shove back underneath the tower. Yeah, anytime Dana, you probably... drop a sentry like that, you got to be careful, right? Because Sand King is always going to have a sentry when he comes to lane. Mm -hmm. Bottom lane is probably where the action is going to be, right? We see uh, any lane with the Shadow Shaman able to hold somebody in place for a couple of seconds, and you're playing the Shadow Shaman with a very low movement speed up against the Ursa, who's got Earth Shock, means an Imperium, and it's after very lengthy stun. That's uh, pretty scary. Probably not too much is going to happen until they hit level three, though. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is they're trading poles right now, so. Uh, they have this nice ward here in the in the dire triangle that actually, or I'm sorry, dire placed a nice ward here on the triangle, uh, this bottom jungle area here. So he saw Imperian setting up for a pull, so he himself was like, "All right, well, you want to pull, you know, small camp? I will pull hard camp," and you know, it ends up d being a pretty decent way of trying to deny some of the creeps and pull the equilibrium in their favor. It's going uh, decently for them right now. Dana all out of mana at the moment. Imagine he's sending himself out. Yeah, Clarity, some mangoes in order to stay inside this lane with his, his Night Stalker. I mean, you'd need the Night Stalker to, to get the, the first couple of waves uh, secured for you because you become like a wet towel. Dana dove the tower here and he's just going to drop, in fact. Oh. You are right. Oh my gosh. 
That was uh, a little bit too far forward. He ended up taking what, like uh, three tower shots there, I think. Yeah, I let it pull. Uh, Jerry pulled camera top for just like uh, just a moment to look <laughs> at the lane, and you know, Shaman died. So shout out to Jerry, that guy. You know, he gets one. You know, he gets one. Yeah, Zora bottom yeah, lane I mean, though, falling super low as well. I don't think they're gonna get the kill. Yeah, not without diving. Zora getting his boots delivered as well as Thena brings those back to lane. If uh, nothing else, nice stock here, you know, despite being pretty slow during the daytime, maybe feeling like a little bit of a kid, and you are somewhat tanky. You've got 6.6, uh, uh, sorry, 5.5 HP regen uh, outside your tower. You've got five armor, so diving him on the earth. So even though you've got tons of physical damage, isn't the best move. Take a look at uh, top lane as uh, Jerry was trying to pan up there uh, for some reason. Phantom Lancer doing a little bit better now uh, against Monkey Driver. They've both got their sentries down here. Yeah, they will finally uh, get that tonight, but Z Freak places it. Oh, no! Oh, they get both sentry wards. Z Freak, uh, I think he anticipated where the ward was going to be in that little cubby there of trees, but ended up being on the other side of the tree line. And Justice, you know, gets the D ward as a result. So but two sentries gone in the top lane. So economical damage completed. Zor bottom lane taking a lot of damage from Boris here. Fena, he doesn't have the shackles, and Boris in one second is going to have that Earth Shock to kind of continue the chase. If he gets a second auto attack, Zor will fall. Kill yeah. goes to Boris on the I Ursa. Kind of once he gets that uh, Earth Shock onto you, once he gets that uh, overbending, you're too slow to be moving away. And uh, Night Stalker, they're doing uh, decent damage to him before that first night. In fact, Thena's going to drop here too. Yeah. Well, yeah, he is. <laughs> I was like, is he? <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. Yeah, that uh, Orb of Venom just providing enough slow to, to stay on top of him now. So, so Ursa doing uh, very well for himself. Uh, I think second in the net, which is the oh, first now. Uh, pretty uh, tied right now uh, with that Queen of Pain. But this is going to go a long way. You get your quick uh, phase boots. You get your quick battle throw. You start farming up like crazy. Monkey's Forever falling very low top lane against Justice. He does have uh, Sandstorm. Yeah, I was like, yes, Sandstorm to try and protect himself. Will end up using it. Justice has to just basically disengage. gets back now justice i mean jakiro usually trades somewhat favorably but uh, having to drop detection down this hand game every time he uh, uses standstorm you know that's the economic damage you mentioned suddenly becomes not worth it five minutes though bounty is grabbed by both teams looks like it's going to be uh three for one not bad yeah definitely Still worth getting those pretty early if you can mm -hmm. Still a little bit of a gold advantage right now uh, for Feld, despite the fact that they're they're down CS, uh, down bounty runes. They're eyeballing mid lane and uh, I annihilate. Uh, Try to go for a Ooh. TP out, but a nice rotation from Thana gets the hex, and uh, they're gonna chase him out of the tower and get the kill. That's the level six. That Sonic wave, quite good. Z Freak also in some trouble as well. That's three points in the Shadow Strike. He's just yeah, they're just gonna grab him with the shackles as Thana got level three off that kill. And they grab it, but in TP in from the Nyx will finish off the Shadow Shaman. I mean, overall, you're really happy with that as felt. Your mid laner just got, uh, you know, two kills, basically. Gets to stay on the map, farm up some nice experience. And, to make and it's worse, a DD I mean, room. I, yeah. <laughs> it makes matters even worse, the DD room. Make matters worse, uh, that town portal scroll's on cooldown because he tried to TP out of that one. So he's got to walk all the way back to the lane now. Ah, uh, the classic walk of shame. Yep. He'll uh, go into the jungle a little bit early. You normally want to hold off, uh, get a couple stacks, wait till the seven minute mark to get some neutral items for your team uh, around the same time that you, you head to the jungle here. But it's uh, pretty scary there in the mid lane with the three points in the Shadow Strike and the DD on the Queen of Pain. So he goes, okay, are we going to wait for that expiring? I don't want to be anywhere near Tay right now. Yeah, absolutely. He does so much damage. I mean, he's top CS and uh, now after those two, ki uh, two kills, definitely top no worth. I mean... You got one kill, one assist, but you know what I mean. Radiant have fortified their structures against attack. Radiant Just about seven minutes into the game, uh, neutral elements will start spawning now. Uh, Zor hasn't had the chance to, to do anything here. I mean, he's just been recovering at the start of this first night. Is, uh, he didn't have a great start to this game. He's been doing a decent job now that the night has started, so he had 2.8k net worth. I mean, he's doing so good right now. He's... Just cutting this wave, tanking it up. He's got a full level advantage onto the Ursa despite, you know, having a death in the lane. And Boris, 
He's got to start taking down this catapult. He can't afford for it to go down. There's going to be the Dark Ascension just get <laughs> slapped by Boris. Being protected for uh for a little bit thanks to that raindrop. So they won't be able to find the kill onto Boris, but... Again, this catapult, it's all space. That's all they're trying to do is take down this tier one tower early. They're going to have to TP in. There's going to be the Rubik. Doppelganger away. The catapult still going. Oh, my goodness. You got to deal with that catapult. Yeah. I mean, they will finally get it, but yeah, down to 197 health in deny range by one HP calculated. Yeah. I'll leave that up for now, though. Important uh, teleport point in case anybody tries to dive that tier one. Super important with the rotation. So, anyway, that Night Stalker ended up getting slapped around. He's had the uh, three stacks of the Fury Swipes on him as he tried to uh, attack Boris underneath the tower. And this is what he's maxing out first right now. So he goes, All right, you're to try to fight me. I'll just man up on you. It doesn't matter if it's nighttime. I'm Ursa. Exactly. Uh, that's something we discussed during the draft. You know, you need a hero that is able to fight uh, the Night Stalker during the nighttime. The two heroes that can do that quite well are the uh, Ursa and the Troll Warlord. So. We'll, uh, look elsewhere on the map. Eight minutes has uh, rolled around. The Queen of Pain is holding on to this uh, haste rune right now. So the map is her oyster, so to speak. Some big jelly for the Ursa. I mean, I'm sure he'd rather it be honey. I'm a little bit confused because it, it is like a honeycomb, right? It is, but it's called jelly. So I've never understood this. I mean, if I was Ursa, I would be I would be very confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, confused and disappointed for that matter. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, sick honey," and then it's just fake honey in the form of jelly. <laughs> Unlucky. Oh, you you say that we should have some original like voice lines for that one? <laughs> Make it canon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sell it, ship it. Let's go right now. Boris bottom lane gets found by the Shadow Shaman long duration shackle, but they don't really have any damage here. It's just justice in the Shadow Shaman kind of trying to apply what pressure they have. The Queen of Pain popping the haste rune. Gonna chase after Boris here. He does have enrage available though. And he's just gonna yeah. TP top. Speaking of top lane, monkeys. Getting bullied out a little bit by Zor. He has four points in the sandstorm. Not the best way to deal with the Night Soccer. The uh, Ursa with him now, so oh, a big they careful. found the Queen of Pain. The five? Yeah, they find the Queen of Pain. The lasso set up there, and the uh, Nyx Assassin uh, Vendetta able to finish her off. Then I'm just gonna go for a TP. One second, but Telekinesis comes in from Z Freak. They're able to take down a second kill here. This one going to I Annihilate on the Bat Rider. Yeah, Two more going. kills going their way. Well, that's going to be uh, about a thousand net worth. Or sorry, a thousand uh, XP swing there, and uh, seven hundred. Or sorry, eight hundred, nine hundred uh, XP, or eight hundred rather. Boris is just giving Zor the business in the top lane. Yeah. Forces uh, the Dark I mean, Ascension because he was just too afraid that he was gonna actually just go down to the Ursa and the trees. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the second time he's done this now. This is like one of the reasons why they ended up picking uh, this Ursa. A lot of the other carries, they just be able to be bullied out by this Night Stalker. I mean, Zord did an excellent job of uh, catching back up, but Boris is able to stand his ground against him. They did mount a defense there on Felt. It looked like uh, simply too basic. They're trying to play around that 10 minute catapult and shove in the mid lane. But this is one of the issues with their draft. They don't have great uh, push. And that's why Felt banned out that Leshrac is uh, the last ban there. So. It's a little bit tricky for them to grab map control here. They do hold their towers uh, pretty well just because of that lack of push. The five hunting Zor in the jungle. I mean, he's got Vendetta, two points in Impale. With the Rubik, an easy pick off. Z Freak's like, hey, thanks for the assist, brother. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> uh, the classic the, uh... Uh, mid lane just off the mark with that ice path. They try to make a gank there on a Sand King. Yeah. There's two Rubik's in this world. There's the ones that use the Fade Bolt to reduce enemy damage, and there's the ones that use the Fade Bolt to take kills. And then there's, there's no Z Freak, who, uh, who manages to do both. But, uh, you know, Z Freak's a pretty greedy for position. Let's be real. Like, this guy loves his money. Yeah. He's I mean, like, he oh, made, yeah. He makes a lot happen with it. Uh, let's be real. So. Oh yeah, that's why you're not. A, that's why you don't mind. Like, oh, look at the sentry drop in the mid lane. Oh no. Oh. That's gotta be just like like ten units maybe. That's the second biggest oversight, Neff. Mm -hmm. 
Yikes. This is so sad. Both teams are going to have vision of each uh, each other's invis, though. <laughs> yeah, that, every, both teams are going to be really confused. Like, wait a minute. Where is their sentries? Like, yeah, there's the here. Shadow Strike landing. That should have been disjointed. He's probably going, what the hell is He's like, uh, guys, they have a sentry. It's just further on their high ground. I can't wait for them to drop the sentry, like, in a way miss. that it doesn't catch the other ward somehow. I don't know. Yeah, they're having to laugh about it right now. I know that it's uh, up there somewhere. The five? Oh, yeah, the five Invading? going for the wraparound. Oh! Uh oh! <laughs> yeah, sentry drop by Justice. All right. That's actually pretty smart. Nice play by him. Just watching the wraparound, seeing if there's a ward there. Wants hmm. to be able to protect that triangle for the Phantom Lancer. Yeah. I mean, the Phantom Lancer does have uh, a lot of space to farm right now because, uh, you know, the, the lack of tower push that uh, we were talking about. Sea Freak has managed to, to shove in uh, this top lane. He's clearing out the, the jungle at the same time right now, limiting uh, the area of the map that Felt has to farm. You know, he plays a, a greedy fine, but he's being greedy in such a way that it's shutting down the enemy team, not his own team. <laughs> Take notes, everybody. They're like, all right, guys, we finally got their sentry mid lane. Surely there's no more uh, detection here, right? And I'm just waiting for the next Shadow Strike to hit Monkeys Forever again. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. And this they, guy, will... they can see him right now. Oh, I know they, they can. Realize it. They're like, yeah, there's a, there's this big scorpion boy here. Haste. All right, that one ended up missing. That one missed. All right. I think uh, they realized oh. that there's detection. Oh. A little Monkeys. bit of a pause here. Hmm. So it gives us a chance to uh, break down the game. Top two here as the net worth right now uh, are on the side of Felt. The longer this one goes, I do think they're in a better place here. There's a couple of things you have to be afraid of, though. The Ursa does have ways of dealing with the Phantom Lancer as the game goes on. And with his Battle Fury, they have lots of AoE damage uh, from the Rubik, from the Sand King. Uh, he's a lot better now that uh, the Epicenter isn't uh, channeling spells. It's a lot easier to get that off in the middle of a team fight. You're not interrupted by like an Ice Path or... Uh, getting jumped on by the Shadow Shaman being disabled. But I, I see this game in, uh, going pretty late if uh, they weren't able to pop off in the lanes, and they haven't here on simply two base. So honestly, despite the fact that I, I would say that two base is like the, the heavily favored team here, felt have a pretty solid shot at uh, winning this one. What's our yeah. win probability thing on Dota Plus? Uh, Gaben, where are we? What are we yeah. thinking here? Uh, almost dead even. 56 to 44 so i mean realistically it's anyone's game still mm -hmm. hey, i do like uh you know the, the general setup right now on felt they have their mid tower sitting about to half hp at the moment they've both taken a, a tier one if ursa it, it depends like how quickly they start to uh, like doing things on the map after the ursa gets like his first two three items the battle fairy then maybe like a bkb after that we'll see but you go too late, you will end up just losing to this Phantom Lancer, right? Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what would happen. There's a smoke here from Felt, and they are wrapping around to the mid lane. Zord does have that Dark Ascension plus Dust. Thana now level 7, so if they get this kill, they likely get the tower as well. Sentry drop right behind the tower. Uh, Monkeys is just pinging it out. They get the scan right on the money. They're prepared. The five yeah. rotating in doesn't have Vendetta this time. A sentry drop behind the tower. A great idea, right? Because you want to make sure they don't have any detection there. But the sentry oh. just barely in range there for monkeys forever. And they just drop everything on him to finish him off. Dude, he was one pixel in that ring. Yeah. It just barely managed to catch him. But he wasn't going anywhere once the shackles came out. Nice positioning there on those uh, mass effort woods there by Thena, though. Putting them in such a place where they're hitting the tower. They're separating the enemy team from being able to come in and save that Sand King. Uh, I mean, if they manage to, to keep the Sand King alive, you know, he potentially gets off a burrow strike and starts to pumping out a lot of damage in return. So, felt, uh, you know, map control suddenly on their side. The first ones to grab that mid-tier one tower. And we go, we talk about this again and again, how important it is in uh, the current patch. Having that tier one up. I'm still waiting on my map changes, by the way. Yeah. Oh boy. They're, they're coming, Neff. <laughs> sure they are. They're working on the Lunar New Year event, I'm sure. Mm. Mm, I see. It was a week ago. What? what? It no. started a week ago. No, no, no. I mean, L Lunar New Year was yesterday. Oh, they managed to catch the Queen of Pain in the bottom lane. A fantastic find there by the five. 
With five, he's doing it again. Look at him, three, zero, and five. It all adds up. It uh, does all add up. Illuminati is checking in. <laughs> Position five, five assists. He'll go for kills from now on. Yeah, yeah, he's got to get five kills. And five deaths. Mid lane, tier one tower in some trouble. They are gonna go ahead and TP some boys in, but Z Freak already behind the tower, just cutting off, doing quite a bit of damage to that level four fade bolt and scream of pain. They will take down the tower. By the way, of yep. Boris on the Ursa, who does have that newly completed battle fear going for that uh, BKB. Mm -hmm. Where are we at on PL? Okay, so we did go the Hood of Defiance into the Yasha Diffusal build. So making him quite a bit more tanky, and it is definitely necessary this game, right? You're against so much magic damage. The Batrider, Sand King, Rubik, Nyx Assassin, like all of these heroes just have so much magic burst. So uh, that extra 20% magic resist ends up being incredibly value. 25. Oh, 20. Oh. What the hell? They're looking for Tay. There's going to be the impale. They had a nice epicenter to try and finish him off, but he still gets the blink out. And now Monkeys, he's just stuck inside the wards. Too much time of that epicenter was wasted. Well, it was a dumbfounded looking at the 20% Hood of Defiance. He's going to get 20% for a cloak. The shopkeeper is ripping you off now. Yeah, you do get the barrier, I suppose. Top tower. Yeah, the cloak mana. is really 20 itself? No, it's 15. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the five? It used to be 20 by itself. Oh, uh, okay. changed it. It was very value back then. The five ends up getting out of that one, though. I said escape there uh, by appearance. Still, uh... I mean, Monkey's Forever is dropping a couple of times here, but this is just how he plays. He he farms in more dangerous areas of the map. He becomes the sacrificial lamb. If you're not too careful as you go on him, he usually ends up turning around and taking one of your uh, heroes out with him. But uh, this game, he hasn't really gotten the chances. Uh, the position one, uh, Boris here, has just been like on the opposite side of the map, hasn't really had a chance to contribute to anything. He's never in a position where he's able to help out Monkey's Forever when they go on him. So... It's paying off. I mean, they're now 4k net worth up on the side of uh, Simply 2 base, but this is this expensive Monkey's Forever's game, uh, basically. Yeah, it is Sand King, though, and he recovers very well, and he is going for the Aghanim Scepter. So, this is one of my favorite builds on this hero. I personally think that Ags, his Ags is one of the best in the game. Like, it's just... It, it is so incredibly strong. Um, and once he has this item, this hero becomes... Very scary. Yeah. All right. Sentry drop mid. They're looking for monkeys. A nice orchid coming in to silence him up. And the boys, they're just going to wrap around and finish him off. There's no assistance coming in from Z Freak or Imperium. Nice telekinesis. But these two guys do a little bit too much damage. And Z Freak will go down the five. Watching as his team lambs to the slaughter. Yep. They don't have vision oh my God, are they right now. Drop a sentry they... or dust. Do it. They're going to do it. They're not going to they, they do don't. It. They don't drop the dust. They have no idea if the five is here. Zor, getting a little bit too uh, freaky in the top lane. Imperium's going for the wraparound. Oh gosh, he is playing with fire, but also a little bit of ice, you know? Mm, nice one. Yeah, I try. Oh, he walks right in, gets immediately Orchid, but the lasso from I Annihilate, well played by him. Shackle is going to be able to do some work. Dana will go down in the process. Justice actually got mini stunned for a moment by that spike carapace and almost cost him his life. But this is now Roche potential as they just walk right in with the Ursa. Yeah, I mean, you don't have any life still, which make it a little bit trickier. But uh, I Annihilate is here to tank this one up. He's got a decent amount of HP and armor to work with. To take this fight right beside the Roche bit becomes uh, so much easier to grab the Roche. And when you have Ursa, you know, even better. Uh, building those Jerry split stacks up on him and not a whole lot they're able to do, unfortunately. Uh, a game even uh, going more and more in the favor of simply two based here. Up a 5k net worth at the moment. And he's just going to farm up these mass different wards. Oh, yeah. That feels so good. Yeah. I got the Imp Claw. It's uh, another huge uh, boon for him. On top of that, a huge extra attack speed boost he's got from the overpower. He's able to blow heroes up. Darkness the jungle, actually committed for I Annihilate's Batrider. He has BKB in six seconds, has 11 wand charges and the Essence Ring, though. I don't know if they have the damage for the Batrider. It uh, seems like they, they, they are kind of realizing the same thing. Monkeys Forever. We'll go ahead and Burrow Strike up the Phantom Lancer. I think it's just stalling tactics here. He does have his Ags and just a little bit of gold. They don't really want to fight without it. 
But as we say so, the five on the backside oh, just no. tries to initiate Ursa. He cliffs himself. Oh my gosh, the fight is now just going to be so much more difficult. Monkeys Forever just getting melted by the Phantom Lens Reports. He's returning to the fray, pops the BKB, trying to cleave them down. Ice Path off the mark, and now. Can the BL escape? He has the Enrage. He has the Overpower. He misses PL just running away, getting salved up by the boy Z Freak. Gonna throw him into the air, drop him down onto an Ice Pass, and they will finish him off. Two biggest cores now brought down. They're forced to get out of there oh, now Vena? on Felt. Whoa. I did not know he was still there. I, I don't think they were really expecting that one there on Simply Two Base, but uh, they'll take it. Yeah. Athena had taken down as well, and now a 7k uh, net worth lead. That fight would have gone even worse had the Ursa not getting tra uh, trapped up there on the high ground. Ended he up getting Monkey Striper and Empyrean. He cliffed himself, right? Am he I did. crazy? Yep. Okay. He, he tried to use Earthshock to get over the cliff and get onto uh, the Queen of Pain faster and just ended up cliffing himself. <laughs> that's, that's a Peppa laugh, indeed. Yeah. Uh, he got back down after eight seconds, so but uh, definitely caught up there for a little it, while. Well, it cost one. monkeys his life, legitimately. Yeah, it cost monkeys his life. Like he he was like ready to fight the PL, and then he's just like, oh, well, we're missing our our battle fury Ursa, so I'm just gonna die now. Well, speaking of the battle fury Ursa, he's uh, really feeling himself right now. He's up fronting the enemy triangle. His team uh, pretty far away from him as well. Oh, he's Enemy so strong. The, They're smoked up with the haste and a BKB on the Batrider. I mean, anyone he lassos is definitely dead. The question is, who he's going to go for? He sees pretty much everyone. The backside of the fight, he also sees Stana and Justice. So the question is, like, does he really want to commit? They will pull back the Shadow Shaman. The lasso doesn't even come in, but there's going to be a Burrow Strike to find the kill. Zor pops his BKB. The Crippling Fear Force Staff out monkeys. His Aghanim Scepter and his ultimate is available, but they will bring him down with the vision, but so will the Queen of Pain. The five falling low pops himself back up to full health, and it will end up falling to that Phantom Lancer, but you've got Boris with this Aegis, with this Battle Fury. They can take down the Phantom Lancer if they have the damage, and Ursa finds the right one. He's got to run. He has that hood active. That's how you scout him out, baby. As soon as you use that barrier, you're like, oh, I found you. You're, all, you're already dead as soon as you use that barrier. So they ended up uh, fooling I Annihilate, but not Boris there with that uh, PL. He tried to micro his uh, strong illusion out of the way there and dip dropping. But fight after fight, they keep on losing this uh, Queen of Pain just blown up at the start. The Batrider built the perfect items for this game. I Annihilate. Just uh, went for movement speed as soon as the Queen of Pain jumps in, just uh, activates the BKB, your orchid suddenly means nothing, you pull him away. This uh, Aetherland is an interesting pickup as well, and I, I gotta say it's working. Oh yeah. I've That's been seeing it. a lot of these like Aetherland's Batriders because it builds into Octarine, and Batrider is incredibly strong with cooldown reduction and cast range, right? And it, it is an incredible synergistic item for him. Uh, if he manages to pick up like a quickening charm uh, as well, like this hero has like boots of travel on. It's something insane, like a thir like a 28 second, second cooldown or something, yeah. and he just like zips and zooms around the map, killing people. Yeah, it's uh, pretty wild. Your BKB becomes uh, incredibly low cooldown as well. Speaking of, he's holding onto an arcane rune right now. That's a nice one. Get, uh, yeah. And, uh, right now we're. I was going to say, it's a 10,000 gold lead. They take the tier 2 mid, and Felt doesn't look like they're willing to defend. You still got the Aegis on board, Daddy, and he's getting real strong. Bought buy out that Blink Dagger, has another 17, 1800 in the bank. That's what we call yeah. stonks, dude. Yeah, Aegis is going to expire in another uh, 10 seconds here, but I don't think they're going to mount a play oh, on the board. Annihilate pops his BKB, but the five, he was there, predicts it all. The lasso comes out. Do they have the damage to finish off the Queen of Pain? A couple auto attacks, they get him. Z Freak, once again with the Fade Bolt from downtown. Yeah, finishes him off. He's not able to get out of that one, unfortunately, just as uh, that lasso ends up expiring. Just so. securing the kill right now. Yeah, just securing the kill. The Queen of Pain needs his BKB uh, yesterday, but still doesn't have it done. Can't exist in these team fights. Hasn't really contributed to anything in the last, like, it feels like 10 minutes now. I mean, he was doing pretty good before, uh, you know, with the daggers, did all right in lane against I Annihilate, but now uh, Imperian is, is just, like, doing work against the Quap. The Imperian and the Batrider both are just shutting down this Quap's game. 
Oh, justice. justice, yeah. He got found and I annihilated. I mean, he's taking a lot of damage from this Phantom Lancer on the backside. Ursa will enrage off those uh, shackles, so he's going to be fine. Zor trying to do what he can and make space for his team, but he's only finding Rubik so far. Nyx Assassin hunting him down. Boris pops his BKB and just melting both of the supports. Clap him down. It wasn't even support. That was the Phantom Lancer. <gasps> he's making him look like a support. What? <laughs> Zor on oh, the run. No. I annihilate says, you have wings, but I have a bat with wings. Yeah. And the felt just uh, melting right now. And now they got the catapult. They're ready to push high ground here. They're going to have to pop this fortified to, to get rid of the catapult. I mean, their one saving grace right now is the fact that they don't have a... Uh, yeah, there's the aggressive fortify. And they're actually going to be able to keep this catapult alive because of it. This is going to help yeah. their push so much. They need that catapult alive because it should survive until the next wave. And there's not really an easy way for Felt to deal with this catapult. Like, they don't have anyone who can walk up and contest it. You have monkeys forever with this long range uh, Aghanim Scepter, uh, Burrow Strike. Of course, I Annihilate with this BKB Lasso. It's already back off cooldown. Um, he did have the Arcane Rune active in the last fight, but I don't think it was the Arcane Rune that was used on the Lasso. No. But yeah, they get the tier three. Structural damage now a 19, oh, 18,000 gold lead. Thanks for making me look stupid. It'll be uh, 19,000 before long here. So I think five cleans out that uh, Observer Ward. And now move back in the jungle, get those tier three neutral items. Uh, that quickening charm that you were talking about. Monkeys forever? No, he's just having, okay. he's just pump faking with the new ulti. It's, it's out there's of the quickening charm. There it is. All right. <laughs> you know, sometimes it all works out. Mm -hmm. They might put it on monkeys, honestly, but I think it's incredibly strong on the Batrider, personally. Yeah, they are going to give it on over to monkeys forever, which is fine. I mean, lower lower cooldown, Burrow Strike is, a, is very good. You also get the Burrow Strike cooldown at 20. Yeah, top lane. Okay, yeah, Queen of Pain is out. A lot of damage, That's but double it. Flame Break. Yeah, uh, that was it. That was the play. Just uh, trying to flame your lands and see how much damage they can do to the Queen of Pain there. She managed to survive it, but just forced the TP all the way back to base and Boris. Oh, they found Jakiro mid lane, the long duration or the long range Burrow Strike with the follow up here from Z Freak and Imperium. Just trying to hobble his way out of that sandstorm, but it's not going to work. And then just taking losses all over the map. Uh, Orb of Destruction. If it was uh, hard to get away from the Ursa before, now it's even worse. That armor reduction gonna help uh, shove these towers as well. Just working on this abyssal blade is uh, his last item. Needs another 800 gold for it to finish it off. Yeah. Sorry, 900 gold. Yeah, I mean they're looking really good here. Simply two base. It's kind of all going their way. The game started out pretty even, but this is what two base does. I mean, this is what we've seen them do time and time again ever, against every team here in the lower division is they just play this mid game and uh are just more efficient they take better fights and the five bottom lane trying to set up a kill here looking for the pl gets the ravage onto two a free kill for the shadow shaman and z freak once again knocks him down oh my goodness they didn't they didn't even plan for the shaman no, uh, they did. The, the shaman was just a bonus kill. A buy one, get one. <laughs> that was, that was on a bogo for market. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'm not sure how they come back from this one. Uh, again, they're holding their high ground for now. 23k not with advantage here at uh, 29 minutes. The only saving grace being that they don't have uh, uh, somebody who can shove in these towers. But uh, Boris is now fixing that. His Abyssal Blade is, uh, I think, on the way now. And next is going to come that swift blank, and uh, when that oh, one's coming so up, this is going to be way too much damage. Yeah, there's there's nothing you can really do once he has swift blank. The extra movement speed and attack speed are so good. Uh, you are hasted, basically, coming out with that. Well, they do catch the dust on the Sand King, but you just have that extra range bro strike, and instead of going defensively, he just jumps right on in, and the Ursa, the BKB, takes down Dana, Telekinesis, the Abyssal Blade, like you spoke about, and the five Vendetta Strike for the kill. They're gonna be able to stun up the uh, Queen of Pain. The question is, can they finish her off? The Monkeys forever, bro strike once again. They have so yeah. much catch from range. It's just borderline impossible to do anything. And they get the PL with the lasso. I annihilate. Oh my God. Absolute disaster here as they will just clean up all of Felt here before the throat explodes. 
Yeah, with that uh, JG being called, to make matters worse, that Queen of Pain just finished that BKB before she ended up getting perma stunned and uh, taking 100 to 0 there. Didn't even get the chance to use it, so there was no buyback available. And simply two base now take a 29k net worth lead at 30 minutes in their victory. Yeah, that was I mean, quite good. Honestly, the game started pretty even. Like, we look at the graphs. Whoop. When we look at the graphs here, it was favored for felt uh to about 15 minutes and then it kind of tilted in favor of simply two base dead even on net worth and uh experience you know uh phantom lancer and um tay were farming the map really well but as soon as boris got that uh battle fury it just seemed like they didn't have the answer for the ursa and you know we we talked about it in the draft like it was a fantastic ursa game right yeah i mean if you look at the, the player items uh tab it, it try to figure out where it all went wrong. I mean, this is where the BKB was done on Boris. This is where the Aether Lens was uh, done on uh, the Batrider. Your, uh, I think Sand King ended up, uh, yeah, finishing the Agnum Scepter at like 22 minutes. And this is where everything went wrong. I mean, they hit all these timings within the span of two minutes. And that's when they just started taking fight after fight. And they couldn't really uh, fight back anymore on, uh, on Felt. I mean, you needed that BKB on Tay. You need a little bit more time on this PL. Maybe if you manage to get your Eye of Scotty, then you would have been able to chase down some of these heroes. But uh, playing so well around their timing, just like great shot calling by two base that game. Yeah, I agree, man. I definitely agree. Um, but I mean, that's only the first series or the first game of the first series here today. You know, felt uh, they might bounce back here in game number two against simply two base. See if they can come up with a, a pretty good draft. I, I think the draft. From Simply Two Base, I mean, they've done their research. They know what Felt likes to play. They ban it out, and uh, Felt's got to adapt. They got to come out with something new. Um, Neff, any other thoughts before we throw it to a quick break here? Uh, no, it's uh, basically uh, all I got going on right there. I I think you know Queen of Pain wasn't the most amazing pick. They changed that one up. Have somebody who could frontline a little bit better, complement their team. Uh, Tay just you know blown up and punished against all this uh, pickoff potential here on Two Base. So. Run it back, change up your draft a little bit. And other than that, you know, you managed to, to go toe to toe with two base until that 20 minute mark. Uh, you're off to a decent start. You just got to figure out uh, a couple things to do differently. All right. Well said. And uh, we'll be back after just a short break. Neff and I, we got to get back to work, build a new lobby for the game number two. So uh, we'll see y'all then.